Right, one of my friends broke down near me, so I'm gonna go help him out. Load up the trailer, because I probably will have to tow him home, unless we can fix it at the site. Uh, big surprise, he's driving a Fiat, Fiat 500. So, yes, Scotty Kilmer is correct. They're not super reliable cars. Anyway, let's get down there. I'm gonna tow him with the 2500, hopefully. See if we can get him off the road. Trailer is hooked up. I'm out of here. Here's a car, a little cute yellow thing. Uh, let's troubleshoot, see what we have. We'll just see what it does to start with. It's not a, it can't be a battery issue because it started up. Although the battery light is on. What I imagine it is, is an alternator issue. Okay guys, well I figured out the problem. Um, basically the battery light was on and the power steering wasn't working, so it was obvious to me that this, the serpentine belt fell off and yep, I was correct. If you look down there, the belt is off. So uh, we'll probably tow this home or drive it back to my place and then I'll uh, just put the belt back on and retension it. Actually it is snapped, so it's likely that the alternator is jammed up as well uh, because these belts don't usually snap by themselves. So I would bet that the alternator jammed up and then snapped the belt. Uh, it likely won't make it back to my shop. So as you can see, we got the little cute Fiat home over the trench here. We're going to go about replacing the alternator now and the serpentine belt. Um, I don't agree with Scotty Kilmer on a lot of things. I think he's a quack full of full of crap but i agree with him on this one thing don't buy a fiat 500 and i'm about to show you why uh, this alternator which is about a 30 minute job on any of my trucks is probably going to be at least a five hour job at least on this fiat and that's because you either have to remove the subframe to get the alternator out or you got to move the engine and it's just an overall uh overall pain in the butt so let me show you what you got to do. All right, so I'm going to walk you through this just to show you how bad of a design it is. And keep in mind, this car only has 88,000 miles on it and is a 2012, so it's only eight years old. And you'll see how much rust and uh, how corroded things already are. So I'm definitely not a fan of this car. I love the way it looks, though. But apart from that, it's got nothing good about it. Okay, now we got the wheel off, we got to take off this uh, skirt kind of thing to get access. Okay, so now that we got all these annoying covers off, I can finally at least uh, see it. But there's another protective cover underneath that we got to take off. So let's go do that next. We got all that off. You can see there's the alternator tucked away in there. Uh, all the manuals and stuff I read said that it won't slide out of here unless you either slide, move this engine forward or remove the subframe, but I'm thinking I might be able to slide it through right here. Actually, on second thought, I won't be able to unless I move that thing. So we'll, we'll see what happens. So I'm gonna try to start getting the alternator out now. Uh, there are three bolts. I can't even get my arm in here, it's so tight. One, two, and then the third one is all the way up there. Really, really hard to get to. So that's gonna be a pain. Um, and we will see if I'm able to slide it out of there without removing anything else. According to all the internet stuff I read, you can't. But because I'm stupid, I'm gonna try anyway. All right, I'm gonna start undoing it now. To anybody watching at home, make sure you remember to unplug your battery before you do this. Now let's get started.
Well, I finally got all three bolts out. Let's see if I can get the alternator out of here. This is the new one. This top bolt here, I think Satan himself designed that. It was impossible to get to, especially with the AC line in the way. Well, look at that, the alternator's out. And of course, I should have known the internet is correct. It does not fit out of this hole, no matter what I do. So, we are gonna have to either remove the ball joint or remove the subframe or something. So I've been messing around a little under here. Here's what I've decided to do to get the alternator out. I undid the motor mount, so you can see the motor's free. And uh, I moved this rubber thing out of the way. I ended up taking the ball joint out, so you get the axle moved. And the alternator's here. It appears like it might be able to come out if I pry the if I pry the motor forward a little bit. So we'll see. We're nearly there. As you can see, I got the ball joint popped out, sway bar popped out, motor mounts are free. We're nearly there. Oh, okay. There she is. Who the hell designed this engine? So as you can see, this one is all seized up which is why it broke the, the belt. And here's the new one going in. Gonna go ahead and try to stuff it back up in that hole. So there it is, stuffed back up in there. I'll put together this hub assembly again to make sure it doesn't fall out on my head. So the suspension's back in and the alternator is in right now, um, meaning the only thing I have left to do is put the motor mount back on, put the plastic cladding back on, put the serpentine belt back on, and then uh, electrically connect the alternator because I, I only have it set in right now. So I'm just going to do that real quick and I'll come back to you when it's in. Okay, alternator's plugged in, serpentine belt is on. This is another annoying thing about uh, this car is that it didn't have any diagram telling you how to put the serpentine belt on, at least not one that I could find. Generally it's up here on the engine. But they didn't even have one, so I had to look it up online and it was kind of difficult to find. But let's start it up and see if it works. Alright, here we go. Let's take a peek. Yeah, look at that. 14.5, perfect. Let's put the rest of the car back together and we'll be all set. And boom, this car is all back together. Let's go ahead and take it for a test drive, make sure everything works. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and take this thing on a test spin just to see how it does, make sure everything's working well. Alright, here we go. Hopefully you guys enjoy my crazy hair popping up back there. stairs. What do you think, Beetle? Which one do you like better? Wow, I'm, I'm going all out and 
So that's going to be the end of this video, guys. Me and Beetle are just going to drive around and make sure everything's working well. Uh, my overall verdict is that it's a cute car, it's a fun car to drive around, but I wouldn't buy one due to reliability concerns and uh, just the poor engineering designs that they chose. I, I'll stick with my Pontiac vibe for now.